my name is Dania from journeyofabrate.com and I am passionate about people's journeys. I got to work on a project with GoDaddy where we showcased the entrepreneurial journey of all the small businesses in Miami that I absolutely adore. So I hope you like it. Dani Santiago is one of the most sought after wardrobe stylists. Born and raised in Miami, he has seen the industry grow for over three decades. His vision helped establish Miami as one of America's top fashion destinations. Sarah Jessica Parker, Gloria Stefan, Shakira, Penelope Cruz, Madonna, and Prince, they've all worked with him. He has collaborated with Patricia Field on the looks of Sex and the City and Sex and the City 2, the movie. Yeah, that's Carrie Bradshaw's dress. And this is where his journey begins. So today we are with Danny Santiago. This man is an icon of the city. So you were born here in Miami. I was born in Miami. I was born in Miami and raised here. Grew up here all my life. And um, my parents, of uh, my mother's Mexican, my father was Puerto Rican. And uh, they moved here in the 1950s when it was the Brat Pack era of Miami and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, and I was born. <laughs> and I was here. I started. And I grew up here all my life. And so. When did you start getting interested in clothes and in fashion? You know, I always had an interest, even very young, when I was a teenager. And my passion was always very much into like dressing up. And we used to go out to clubs and parties and stuff. And my group of friends and myself, we would go to like vintage stores and thrift shops and put together outfits and dress up. So. I didn't really realize at the time that that was something that I would actually do as a profession. Mm -hmm. But I went to college and I studied fashion because I liked it and I worked in a store. And I had a photographer come to me one day and they were like, oh, I love what you have in the store. Could you come and put some things together and come out to the, to the shoot and put it together for the model? And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, because I would always dress my friends and we always did it. And it was also in the era of the 80s when it was Miami Vice and you know, people were looking at Miami because it was a beautiful location. People were doing, you know, photo shoots here. There were a lot of Europeans coming over to shoot with all the Art Deco architecture and stuff like that. So it was right when the whole boom started that people really realized it, Miami became a thing, a style. You know, it was that look, the pastel buildings, the Art Deco architecture and all that sort of stuff. So I was there, I was a part of it and kind of grew with the industry at that point. What year was this when you actually, when you did your first styling, let's say? Um, you know, as far as what I did, you know, I started with little local magazines mm -hmm. and I started working with them, doing editorials for uh, the like paper newspaper magazine kind of things that were yeah. here at the time. And then um, Ocean Drive opened here in Miami and I started working with them. And for a short time, I was the fashion editor for Ocean Drive for about eight years. And I worked time. with them, and that <laughs> okay. was in the that was in the the '90s into the early 2000s and the late '90s. And at that time, I started working with um, European magazines that would come down. I would work with you know all these uh, different people that would come that wanted to do editorial. No. What are the obstacles you have encountered along the way um, being based here in Miami? Well, I think the biggest has been, which we kind of discussed a little bit, is Miami. I feel has a stigma in the sense that. They feel everything is just about a bikini, being sexy, and that they don't really see so much like a culture beyond it. But I think a lot of people don't realize that there is an actual culture here, that there are amazing artists, amazing designers, amazing local people that are really doing something in the community. And I feel like we don't get that exposure as much as we get, oh, the girl in the Ferrari, you know, on the beach, you know, in the bikini and that type of stuff. That's what most people see Miami as being. But I feel that there is an amazing amount of creativity here. There's an amazing amount of, you know, people that really want to develop something in our community and stay here and develop it and create a real culture within Miami. Absolutely. And also, uh, there was a point when you started collaborating with Patricia Field, and I think that was yes. a very determinant point of your career. Well, Patricia Field and I were friends originally just because 
we sort of knew some of the people at the clubs. And I was going up to New York because I would spend half the year in Miami, half the year in New York and working back and forth. And um, I met her through friends. I had always shopped in her store, you know, with all yes. the clothes and the different designs and things like that. And um, little by little, uh, you know, I got to know her better on a social uh, way. And then she moved to Miami. She bought a place here that she has. And that was in the 90s. And then, you know, she would have uh, projects that she was coming down here and doing. And sometimes I would help her with some pieces. And then a shoot came up when she was doing Sex and the City on the, the TV show. And she was like, would you want to do this, you know, and, and dress the girls or whatever. And I was like, sure. So, you know, so I was in New York and we did the shoot. You know, the show was ending. They had talked about a movie. And I actually, in the neighborhood, did a pop-up night one time with a bunch of local designers that I used. And we did this pop-up where the um, post office building is here on the corner in the design district. And we did, um, we did a pop-up shop and we called it Go Postal. And uh, we featured about 15 designers. And Patricia Fields happened to be here in town. And so I invited her and she came. And she says, you know, they're calling me about doing the movie, the Sex and the City movie. And she said, would you be interested in becoming a part of it and working with us on it? And I was like, absolutely. I was like, I was always a fan of the show. Who wasn't? Exactly. You know, I mean, it's so iconic of so many styles that were developed, so many trends and things like that. So I was like, of course, I would love the opportunity to be able to do that. So, um, and it happened. She was like, okay, great, we're working on it. It's gonna happen. And I was like, really? I was like, not really expecting. And then like a week later, I got a call and go like, yeah, it's happening. So I went to New York. We worked on the first movie. We did the film. That was a blast. That was amazing. I mean, it was such a, you know, you had every door of every designer, you know, just going in because Everyone loves the show. Everybody's such a fan about the style and the fashion. So, you know, we'd go into Chanel and they would like pull the truck in. We'd just grab whatever we wanted. You know, every designer was sending things from Paris, sending things from Milan, you know, for us to use. We would do these fittings and we'd have like 10, 12 rolling racks of clothes and we would do all the fittings and stuff. And it was a great experience. It was amazing. It was a great team that we worked together with and stuff. So we did the first movie. And then, you know, that came out and all of that. And then uh, the second movie came up, and I became a part of that as well, and did the same thing, and worked on the movie with them. So it's been a great connection with her, and working under her, and you know, we ha share a lot of the same sensibilities, and we like a lot of the same things and stuff like that. And she, of course, is such a, you know, uh, she's amazing how she can develop so many designers that she's worked with, local independent designers from New York that she would mix. And I always love that sensibility of like high low, you know, the you know, you, you have a couture gown but you're wearing like a piece of jewelry from a new unknown designer or something, or you you know, whatever it is, or a vintage piece of something. And you know, she just has a great sensibility with mixing a lot of things and kind of creating an independent look rather than a pit a look that just came from a runway. And I feel that's also developed with what a lot of people are now. You know, people don't necessarily wear head, head to toe of one designer. It's more interesting to develop your own style as you. I mean, you know, you, you put your looks together and you develop it for yourself. You become your own um, image rather than being an image of a designer, you know? And I think that's much more interesting in fashion anyway, when you do it on your own and develop your own style, that you don't look like a copy of you know. Something that I also find really interesting about this whole Sex and the City experience that you went through is that you were able to push local brands as well. So oh, yeah. There was yeah. Mariana Castro. Who yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I um, used a lot of the local brands. I brought from some of the. Of Miami. Yeah. You had access everywhere. Yeah, else. You so. In your and that's the thing. Like, yes. I brought people in because I was like, this is just as good as anywhere else. Absolutely. I know these pieces are going to be amazing. I know that everyone's going to love these things. So I would try to bring those things and incorporate that as well. So it was a lot of fun to do that. And what about, you also designed costumes, right? Because I designed costumes, I did, you know, I've done things over the past for different jobs that I would need to build something and things like that. There's a club here by the name of El Tucan, that's a, a, a Latin club, of, uh, and it's sort of like a 1950s take back to 
Cuba and the glamour days of that era, and I designed all the dance costumes and things like that for them, and um, you know, keeping in mind sort of that glamour of that period. Um, so I've done a lot of different things like that. I've played around with that, which is so much fun to do. Um, you know, it's always your own take, and you interpret something, and you get the inspiration from it, but you make it new again. So what is the best part of your day with all of those different... <laughs> the best part of my day? Yes. Um, I mean, I just love playing with different things. I love the experience of what I... I'm so lucky to do what I do that I can be creative in my in my job and in my work, and that I can, you know, come up with ideas and people actually, you know, appreciate it, that I can, I can express myself in that way. And, and to me, that's the best. That's the best thing to do. And for someone that is starting in this business and is also in um, a city like Miami that sometimes doesn't have the spotlights when it comes to fashion, what kind of advice would you give? It's all about your passion, you know? I mean, if you've got the passion inside of you and you see something that you want to do, I think you have to go for it. You know, sometimes you have to knock down some walls, but don't lose your sight of what your passion is. You know, I think with all of us, you know, we have to sort of stay within our own track. You know, if you love something, no matter what, and if you feel nobody else understands it or nobody else, they will. You just have to be passionate about it. You have to stay with your ideas. You have to stay with, you know, what you ideally want to do within your heart as far as work goes when it comes to being creative and your own creativity. Uh, you know, I did it, you know, I had no idea that this even existed and I was able to do it, you know, so I think it's it's being true to yourself on what you really love to do. You were not related to the fashion industry at all, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> I grew up in Kendall, like out in the, in the suburbs, like we, we, you know, it was anything but, you know, fashionable, it was like the typical suburban lifestyle, you know, so it's like, I always, the only thing that I remember is envisioning is, is growing up in the era of like the 60s and the 70s. I was always, you know, I mean, there was always such great visuals and things that I remember when seeing people, how they dressed or how they looked or the design of things. I mean, I've always loved architecture and design as well. So that's always been very special to me. And I think that's a sensibility, I think, from living in Miami is it's got a lot of really interesting architecture and stuff. So. I did see that around me, and maybe that had something to play into things, mm -hmm. but um, but yeah, no, no, no experience in fashion prior. I love that because a lot of people <laughs> feel like if they don't have that background or if they have no way of relating to it, they shouldn't pursue their dreams. And yeah, I think it's and it's all about your inspiration. You know, I would see movies, you know, and I would love the way somebody would look at a movie or be yes. inspired by a style, you know, of an era, you know, something that came from. The 1940s and the 1930s, you know, and, and, and to see an actress or something in in her role of how she carried herself within that and developed a look or a style, you know, you think of all the icons, you know, you have like, you know, uh, Marlena Dietrich and you know, uh, you know, Catherine Hepburn and you know, all these all these actresses from that era, and you just I would see those and just you know, you know, acknowledge that that's something of beauty. Even though I didn't have it in my backyard, it was something that I saw and I knew that at some point that was something that I wanted to do. I have a last question for you. How yeah. do you define success? How do I define success? It's really about being happy. I think it's about being happy within yourself and finding, again, your, your uh, place that you feel satisfied with what you've done in your life. You know, success to me isn't necessarily about being, you know, of course, the gains are great, you know, you make good money, you have, you know, a nice home and things like that, but you really have to be satisfied with what you've done with your life. To me, that's successful with whatever it is that it is, and with which whatever, you know, field that you want to be in, it's more about being happy with what you're doing. You wake up every morning and you can work and you can do something that you really enjoy. That, that to me, is success. Absolutely. Thank you, Lenny. You're welcome. Thank you You're so welcome. much for this. It was a pleasure. So what did you think? Um, did you like it? Did it spark something in you? If it did, please let me know in your comments. Would love if you would subscribe so that we keep this conversation going. Thank you.